Hello, this is Marcus from Profile Tree, and in this video, we'll be having a look at some of the appearance options within your WordPress site. To start, we'll hover over appearance within the left toolbar in the WordPress admin. First, we will have a look at themes. Here, we can see any themes that we currently have existing on our site. First one you'll see is the one that is active. We will typically keep a standard WordPress theme here in case we need it for debugging purposes. But in general, we will not want to activate or deactivate any of these without the aid of a developer. Any updates available for themes can also be made here. Next, we will click on Customize. After clicking on Customize, we will load up the home page here on the right side with a toolbar on the left side. There are some options that may be useful within here and they'll be brought to your attention if applicable to your site. Within Site Identity, we can set the logo as well as the site or file icon as it is sometimes referred to with instructions on size. And also change the site title and the main tagline of the website as well and whether or not to display these. We may see some other options related to the theme here such as colors, any image placements, which when clicked will bring up the standard WordPress media library. We can also access some of our menus here as covered in a previous video. Similar to making changes directly from the menu page, Locations and any additional options can be made here as well, if applicable. Any widgets, which we will look at shortly. Home page settings. So here we can set the home page for the site, sometimes referred to as the front page. And if applicable as well, a page for our posts. We can change by default whether we go to the post page or what we've designated as our home page by default when people land on the basic URL of the site. Next, we have our WooCommerce options. There may be some useful options here to change the layout and structure of your site. First, we have our store notice, a notice which will be displayed site-wise, just in case there is any immediate information that you need to give to your customers. Simply type in the notice and then click on enable. For product catalog, we can change some of the conditions that we use, what we show on our shop page, the categories page, and some of our default product sorting. Typically the default will work, but there may be special cases where we want to change these, such as displaying subcategories on the category page instead of the products themselves that fall into that category. Or, in this, or otherwise we could show both. For the default product sorting, we go by custom ordering and name. But we can also arrange them by popularity, or average rating if we have that enabled. And in general, just by most recently published or by pricing.
We can also change the amount of products that we see per row and the amount of rows then that we have on page. So in this case, there will be 16 products per page for in each row. Here we can change the display of some of the product images. We can pick a custom ratio. We can stick to the default one to one. So in this case, it'll just be a square shaped. Or you can set them to be uncropped so that they display at their original ratio. Typically, we'll want the images to be consistent. So either a custom ratio or one-to-one -one would be recommended here. Next, we'll have a look at the checkout options. Here we can choose to display or hide some fields that we have. Company name, an address line two, and phone field. You can decide to set these as hidden, optional, or required when the customer goes through a checkout process. By default, any required fields are highlighted with an asterisk, but this can be disabled if you like as well. There will still be a notification given to the customer when they try to place an order without having completed some of these required fields. Here, we can also set our privacy policy page and our terms and conditions page. Simply click on the drop down and it will give you a list of published pages on your site. And these will automatically display where appropriate within the checkout process. We can also add some text here about our privacy policy. We'll typically want to keep this as default, but just to keep in mind that this section here will act as a link to our privacy policy that we have set above. So if any amends are being made here, make sure to take a copy of this exactly as it's written. Finally, within our appearance customize, we have additional CSS. We don't recommend to make any amends here unless you are a website developer. Once we've made any changes in this menu, we can simply click on publish to make the changes live, or we can schedule the changes for later. We can even save them as a draft if there's something that we want to come back to later or we can discard the changes, or summarily, just click on the X button in the top left. An instruction will be given the one that you will lose all the changes that you made if you navigate away. Next, we'll have a look at the widgets. Widgets are typically used for any sidebars that we have within our site. Here, we may have a search bar, a list of categories, recent posts, or sometimes filters for our products as well. There will be separate white boxes on the right side for every relevant sidebar appropriately named. In this case, looking at our blog sidebar, you can see it has a search, a list of categories, and some recent posts. Clicking on each, we're given some options to change. In this case, the title for the search bar. How we want to display a list of categories. And how we want to display our recent posts. If we want to add something new, we can simply look for the list of widgets that we have on the left side. 
Some of these might be a bit more developer intensive, but in general, most of them are fine to use. We want to add any text, for example, we simply click on this text, drag it and place it where we want within this sidebar. In this one, for example, we can add in a title and some custom text using the standard WordPress editor. Any changes here will be live. But it's worth noting if we add something new that there will be a save button in the bottom right just to save these changes. The title will typically be, typically be used as a reference for the content of the given item that you've added. To remove one of these items, we can then just simply click on delete. 